All right. Looks like we're live. Good evening, Father Matthew. Well, good evening, Natalie. Good to be here again with you guys. Yeah, I am really enjoying our summer series and Q&A with Father Matthew Nash. Kristen is still on maternity leave, loving on her baby. So. Which is awesome. It's always good when we're bringing new life into the world and a good reason, I guess, you know, when you're not going live is, well, you got a baby. So that's phenomenal. Every time we hear about new life, we just had another birth in the parishes here, this time at All Saints in Hyannis and uh, got another baptism coming up at St. Mary's. And so it's always, it's just wonderful with new life in the church. Oh, that is exciting. Well, you know, I think you said in a homily once, if the church isn't crying, it's dying. So bring on the babies. <laughs> For that phrase, I don't know where it comes from, but I absolutely, yes, I'll put that in the bulletin regularly or say it. You know, if you're crying, it's definitely dying. But it's nice to hear that. It is. So, well, tonight we are going to pray the Luminous Mysteries because we're going to be talking about the Eucharist tonight and answering some pressing questions that people have over the Eucharist. So we do have a couple um, prayer requests tonight for some special intentions and you for um, the baby that was born. I think it would be good too if, if I can push a little selfishness on there, pray for the repose of the soul of Pauline passed away out there in, in Scott's Bluff, uh, but also for Bethany, who was born, and just any families that are able, I think, to get together, too, over the summer and spend time together for whatever reason, that they can have good a good rapport and good relationship there with, with everyone. Mm -hmm. Strengthening of families, for sure. So, all right. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe creator of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy ghost born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven seated at the right hand of god the father almighty from thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and life everlasting amen our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For the increase to the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The first luminous mystery is the baptism in the Jordan. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, and was led by the Spirit through the desert for forty days, being tempted by the devil. From the Gospel of Luke. Jesus was honored by the Father with words of affirmation from heaven, and the Holy Spirit filled him with power. Yet even then, the enemy was waiting for his chance to tempt the Savior, and he made his move soon thereafterward. Through prayer, fasting, and his knowledge of Scripture, our Lord won the contest, and the devil withdrew in defeat. Do I ask the Holy Spirit's assistance in my own struggle against temptation? Have I taken up Christ's weapons of prayer, fasting, and sacred Scripture? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The second luminous mystery is the miracle at the wedding feast of Cana. And on the third day, a miracle took place at Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now Jesus, too, was invited to the marriage, and also his disciples. His mother said to the attendants, do whatever he tells you from the gospel of John. Turning water into wine at Cana was the first of Jesus's miracles. In the following days, his ministry, he undid the works of the devil as he continued his miraculous deeds, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, and demonstrating in other ways his divine power over evil. Am I willing to accept a share in Christ's saving power so I can help set the captives free from bondage to the enemy? In exercising that power, am I willing to follow Our Lady's instruction to do whatever Jesus tells me? <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The third luminous mystery is the proclamation of the kingdom. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. From the gospel of Mark. To deliver us from the dominion of darkness and transfer us into the kingdom of light, Jesus did more than work miracles. He preached the gospel as well. This gospel, this good news, was the announcement that through his life, passion, death, and resurrection, the incarnate Son of God had come to defeat the powers of evil, vanquish, and vanquish sin and death. Even as now, such a proclamation demands a response of faith. Do I firmly believe this good news? Am I witnessing, and wit am I a witness who declares it to others, so that more and more the righteous reign of God is extended throughout the earth? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fourth luminous mystery is the transfiguration. As he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud that said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And on hearing it, the disciples fell on their faces, and they were greatly afraid. And Jesus came near and touched them and said to them, Arise, and do not be afraid. From the Gospel of Matthew. A divine intervention on the Mount of Transfiguration startled and terrified the three apostles who witnessed Christ's stunning radiance there. They were paralyzed by fright, so that Jesus had to touch them and tell them not to be afraid. His call to courage would soon prove all the more urgent. They descended from the glory of the mountain to confront a demon down in the valley where their lack of faith hindered them. Am I prepared to overcome my fear when the spiritual warfare between heaven and hell rages fiercely all around me? Or am I tempted to flee? Have I asked the Lord as the apostles did to increase my faith and give me hope and courage?
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fifth luminous mystery is the institution of the most holy Eucharist. For as often as you shall eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. From 1 Corinthians. When our Lord instituted the Eucharist, he placed in the hands of his church an incomparable weapon in her warfare with the evil one. His death on Calvary was to breathe the supreme defeat and humiliation of the forces of darkness, so that ever after demons would shrink from the emblem of the cross. How much more, then, do they tremble at the thought of the altar in whose holy sacrifice that all-conquering death is both proclaimed and presented until the Lord returns to earth in his final triumph over evil? Am I partaking of the Eucharist worthily, faithfully, and frequently, so that the enemy of my soul is firmly repulsed? Do I avail myself to the powerful graces of the other sacraments as well? Do I make use of the confessional regularly so that I can be confident in my reception of communion? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thee. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, shown to us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O most holy mother of God. That we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten son by his life, death, and resurrection has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. Grant we beseech thee that by meditating upon these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the blessed Virgin Mary, that we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Most pure heart of St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Kateri Tekawitha, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thanks for leading us in the Luminous Mysteries. My so, pleasure. Um, we Always are continuing on our summer series with the Q&A session over the Eucharist. So it's only fitting that we start with the life of Christ and then talk about the Eucharist. So I just want to give a... A quick hello to all the women that are joining us. Of course, Kristen's praying with us, she just as an on camera. And then uh, Carol, Judy, Sherry, Aunt Jerry, Mary and Mary, thanks for joining us. And I really enjoy our live rosary on Wednesday nights and the little community that we have going. And it's just always so great to connect. And um, yes. if you have questions for Father Matthew, you can post them and I'll see if we can get to them but the first question tonight is our first that, question uh, wasn't even really a, a question but it's a good statement actually uh, yeah. like the real presence dot 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 i can't even wrap my brain around that okay uh, a few yeah. things i'll try to be brief because i know i can go long-winded over all this but I'll, I'll try to succinct this um the real presence if you have not read john chapter six in the last three days you need to read john chapter six Okay, John chapter six. If you have not read John chapter six, it's it's 64 verses long, ish, maybe a few more. Read it, John chapter six, just read it. Read it again. Um, in another week, pick it up and read it again. As Catholics, I think that's important. We are accused often of not following sacred scripture. John chapter six, come on. Um, one, we wrote it, so, but John chapter six. Uh, there, Christ is doubling down that he is truly present in most holy communion. What he is doing in the other gospels is what we hear at mass, where we hear the words, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body. The consecration and the other prayers at mass are coming uh, primarily from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but uh, does not have really the same last supper discourse. Instead, he goes into what's called the bread of life discourse. And it's, it's very, it's, it's not very long, but it's, it's beautiful. He's doubling down and he's saying that I am truly present in Holy Communion, body, blood, soul, and divinity. This is me. Because he says repetitively over and over and over and over and over again, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you. And the flesh that I will give, or this bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world, right? And so he's just echoing that over and over. And towards the end, the Jews get real upset with him. And they're like, we don't do cannibalism. And they leave him. It says many disciples abandon him over this difficult teaching because it is hard to wrap our brains around the Eucharist. But so many of them walked away, and then Christ comes up to Pope St. Peter, and thank gosh, our first Holy Father got it right this time. 
um, says, mm -hmm. are, are you two going to abandon me? And of course, Pope St. Peter says, Lord, where, where would we go? You have the words of eternal life. Like we believe already as the early church, this is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. This is no longer bread. This is no longer wine. And if we, this is what we believe. This is the crux of our faith, the source and summit of our faith. St. Francis would say, what a sublime and truly humble act that God loves us so much that he would come to us as himself and come to us in a way that's not repulsive, in a way that we're able to receive him. How many of us would present ourselves for communion if, if you were handed a piece of cardiac flesh? Most wouldn't, right? No. Like, no. So he comes in such ordinary appearances. And what happens is, is he's transformed. We call this um, transubstantiation. And so what, what happens is the substance of the bread and wine change. The substance is what makes it bread and what makes it wine. So for example, you can identify a plethora of wines, right? Because there's a substance of wine that says, hey, this is wine. There's a substance of a table that says, this is a table. I could be at a round table, a square table, an octagon table. You could have a triangle table, but you can identify it as a table, as a substance. So the substance of bread and wine become the substance of who Jesus is. They becomes Christ himself, but he keeps the accidents or the way it appears. So uh, a concrete example, the substance of me is I'm Father Matthew. The substance of Natalie is she's, she's Natalie. Now, if somehow our souls were to swap, our accidents is what would change, right? All of a sudden, I would have longer hair. Natalie would have shorter hair. She'd be wearing black and constantly overheating. So the accidents <laughs> would, would hold if the soul was switched. Um, and it's not really the same as switching the soul as, as a transubstantiation, but it's, it's an analogy that gets us close, that Christ is truly there, body, blood, soul, and divinity, and there's just the accidents of bread and wine. He looks like cheap Morgan David wine that I got at the store, um, but that's, that's not what he is. That's, he's, he's Christ. And in the Eucharistic miracles that have occurred around the world, even the ones that are still occurring, it's really cool because all of the Eucharistic miracles where the host turns into flesh, it's always a cardiac heart. Well, the cardiac is the heart. It's always cardiac flesh that's stressed. Well, I would imagine that's, that's stressful. No, it's always stressed and it's always, um, AB positive, the universal receiver, Christ receives all right. The universal receiver. And it's interesting because they've typed the blood that's come from like Padre Pio's hands of the stigmata, the wounds of Christ that he had received. And they've typed it with the blood of the woman in China and with the blood of a Eucharistic miracle in Mexico and in Poland, it's all the same. Um, now, you can't tell me some communist regime was able to get Padre Pio's blood from the Italians who would probably blow the whole world to smithereens if someone tried to touch Padre Pio. Um, <laughs> like, it doesn't work that way. So it's, it's just such an amazing miracle um, that he's truly present to us, uh, that he's truly there. We're able to receive him in such a way. This is our new Passover. The Lamb of God is being offered in the Mass, um, just as the Lamb was offered in Exodus in, in, the, in the first Passover, huh? And the lamb, of course, is then sacrificed at the same time on, on the cross as, as the lambs are being sacrificed for the, for the remembering of Exodus, the remembering of the Passover. And a new covenant is forged, that covenant with us that I will be your God and, and take away your sins and we will be your people. But then always in, in the making of a covenant, the, the meal of the lamb was shared. And so we, we literally present ourselves, if, we, if we've been to confession, to receive the lamb of God, to be able to, to consume him with everyone around us, you know, all these families have procured the lamb together and now we're coming to be able to receive and eat that very flesh of the lamb who takes away the sins of the world only in this case it is the lamb who takes away the sins of the world um last thing on that i think it's real cool and uh, the old testament when we when covenants were made they would often split animals in two and you'd walk between them with the idea of the covenant being made between two peoples or between god and a person but typically between two peoples that if someone were to break that covenant may their soul and their bodies be made like those animals split in half Right? So they'd make that covenant with each other between the two. Notice when the priest elevates the host and he says, behold, the lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the lamb. The host is fractured and he's broken in two. And we are spiritually passing between the very lamb of our Lord to receive him and make this covenant with God, the father, that we will be your people and you will usher us into the kingdom of heaven. So it's very powerful moments occurring in the liturgy when Christ is made present. So anything on add on that or should I keep going <laughs> very informative so I just want to tell everyone that I video or I record these and I upload them to our YouTube page so if you need to hear that again so you can write down the details <laughs> they will be on our YouTube page but read John chapter six there's a book called Eucharistic Miracles you can read all about the Eucharistic Miracles that I think Spirit Catholic Radio puts out a Eucharistic Miracles 
kind of slide or, you know, like a display or whatever. And sometimes those are going around. I don't know where they are right now, but <laughs> and you can um, request those to come to your parish, I think. And request too, if your pastors are interested, we'll do it here eventually. Ascension Press has a, <clears throat> it's like a Bible study, but a study of what happens at mass. Um, I mean, we're, we're kind of doing a homily series here, but it, it's a very good series, uh, far more in depth than anything my parishioners are getting out of a homily because it's, it's they're an hour and a half long deal um, if you do it all at one time. But you can watch the video mm -hmm. and then go back and read the readings on your own. But it kind of breaks down everything that's happening at Mass. It shows where everything is contained in sacred scripture. It talks about how Christ is being made present, how this is our Passover, why we're doing the things we do because the church won't just arbitrarily do anything. So why are we doing Catholic calisthenics in the middle of Mass? Well, there's powerful meaning with all of that. Why... Why are these prayers have to be said at this time? Why can't we consecrate a 12 year old scotch? Why does it have to be wine? Well, it's gotta be that it's, it's, it's all laid out. Um, so it's a great study to be able to look at that from Ascension Press, the mass. Yeah, Ascension Press, the mass. Yeah. So uh, there a few years ago, a Pew Research study came out that said that less than 50% of Catholics believed in the true presence. And it just got me thinking as I was reading that, like I'm a cradle Catholic. And so I, or I am not a cradle Catholic. I'm a convert. And so I had an experience with the Eucharist that um, I would say was a mystical experience in its nature, just because it was my first time receiving the Eucharist. And I was like, this is the real deal guys, you know? <laughs> and so I would just challenge you that, um, you know, if, if you're questioning this and you haven't had an experience with the Eucharist, then just ask for it. In the Gospels, Jesus says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you will find. And so ask for the grace to be able to understand the true presence and that Jesus will reveal himself to you. Is I mean, can you do that, Father? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I want to point something out that you kind of brought up there. What we see in scripture is uh, doubt isn't the problem. Having a doubt about the teaching isn't the problem. It's what we do with it that can be a problem. So if we're doubting the true presence of the Eucharist, then run to the Eucharist and, and, and ask, you know, reveal yourself to me. Spend time in adoration. Even if our Lord isn't exposed, just go sit before the tabernacle. You know, there's something, even if the encounter takes a long time, there, I guarantee you just spending 10, 30, an hour in front of the tabernacle, there's going to be an overwhelming sense of peace that comes into your soul. Even if you don't feel like you've heard God talk, even if you don't feel like something's being explicitly communicated, there's going to be this sense of peace that comes. Because the Prince of Peace can't help himself but bestow that, it seems, right? And so just being able to spend that time uh, in that presence with him is going to help immensely be able to recognize who he is in the Mass. Um, if we're not spending time with him, then that relationship isn't going to be built up to be able to witness to him. It's kind of like if you're dating someone, you don't just say, hey, we're dating. I'll see you for one hour a week. And then you're never going to get to know each other ever, right? So go spend right. some time. Um, and don't be afraid to say like, you know, I'm struggling with this. And even maybe it's not the teaching of the Eucharist you struggle with, whatever teaching it is, bring it to them. Um, cause Christ responds to that beautifully, right? He sets the disciples down and he teaches them. They say, well, we don't understand that. And he goes, oh, okay, sit. And then, right. And he explains it. So take it to them. Um, don't be afraid to do some research into that on your own too. You know, it's the answers are there and God, we, we invented the scientific methods. So don't be afraid to ask questions, look stuff up, spend time with our Lord. <laughs> that's great advice thank you father what's the next question on the list since this is the true presence of jesus what happens if a consecrated host falls to the ground if it's mm -hmm. unconsecrated you pick it up and you throw it away because people don't want to eat something that's been on the floor if it's consecrated meaning it is the body of jesus um i always just consume him myself um immediately um stop whatever's going on consume that host and immediately check for crumbs because God exists in every particle of the Eucharist. And so we check for crumbs on the floor to make sure he's not there. Or even if I drop him on the corporal, which is that white cloth that comes as a square and gets laid out over the altar right before the priest says the consecration prayers, um, I, I look for particles that are there if, 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 I've, if anything's dropped. Um, same uh, when we purify the sacred linens, like the purificator, it looks like a napkin that's used to kind of wipe the chalice. Um, when we purify that or the corporal, again, that corporal meaning corpus body, the deal that holds the body of Christ when he's on the altar, um, the cloth, uh, we, we soak that in water for a long time to allow any particles that could be in there to completely dissolve. So our blessed Lord isn't just like 
rolling around in a Maytag dryer um, or washer. You know, we, we, we avoid that. Um, so that, that's what we would do if the host falls to the ground. If you have servers with patents, the goal of that is to try to catch a host before we would ever hit, hit the ground. They would catch our blessed Lord with that. That's a stick with the gold dish at the end of it. They would, the goal is to catch it. Sometimes the little kid you got standing there, you're like, I don't think this is going to do any good if something happens. Other times you'll be like, yeah, this kid's got it. And other times you're going to wonder if they're going to take that patent and whack their sibling in the throat when they come up for communion. <laughs> right. This is what it is. Um, how do we clean the chalices? Uh, a couple things, because I'll combine this with the question of why do we wipe the sacred vessels down at the altar? What we're doing first in the first purification of vessels is purifying them. When we wipe them down at the altar, we know Jesus exists, body, blood, soul, and divinity in every particle of the Eucharist. And so any drop of the precious blood that's still in the chalice, any crumb that's still left in those patents needs to be consumed or returned to the tabernacle. Since we typically only return full hosts to the tabernacle, then I wipe any crumbs that are in the patents, the gold bowls or dishes uh, into the chalice that looks like a goblet. Um, and we pour water in there, making sure that all of all of the crumbs and, and particles are there together. And then the priest consumes that, make sure there's nothing left, and he wipes that out. Um, again, using the purificator just in case somehow he missed something, because the purificator will then be dissolved in water to make sure, you know, we're not we're not missing anything of our Lord. And then afterwards, they they do get an actual washing in the in the sacristy. That's the room where the priest changes with the servers and the lectors, or as my niece would ask, where does Father Vince go to become God? Um, he doesn't. None of us do, but uh, that, that little room off the altar or in the back, wherever yours is, um, they, they typically get washed there. We try to use special soap, never hard soaps. We ask people to take their rings off so we don't grind the, the gold right off the chalice there um, and then dry them with, with special towels so they don't get scratched. We want to keep those nice, not only for the Lord, but for the parish that is sacrificed to buy those things for the Lord. We don't want to abuse the sacred vessels, we see how that goes in the Old Testament, right? And not, not, not pretty. So we try to be careful with that. Um, why do we do that at the altar, though? Because there's still particles of Christ there that we're purifying. So that, that first washing is done at the altar itself. And then they can be, once there's no Jesus there, they can be regularly cleaned. Uh, the other question is receiving. Hands, tongue, kneeling, standing, what's the big deal? Holy moly, you want to spark arguments. Um, you cannot be denied communion on the tongue. I do want to point that out to people. I don't know where priests got the idea that they could do that. Pope Francis even actually reminded us of that a few months ago. You, you cannot do that. That's universal law. Um, a priest, if he is in doubt, could deny you on the hand, but in the United States, he's not supposed to, unless he's in doubt about what's happening. So let's, let's break that down. Let's say, because I've had this happen, someone comes up, and they're acting weird. They've said the right words, body of Christ, amen. But they're like, and they're being weird. Um, I will not give them communion on the hand because I don't know what they're going to do with it. Um, there are Satanists that will steal hosts. There are people that take the blessed sacrament to use them at black masses, which is funny because Satanists believe in the true presence of the Eucharist, probably at a higher percentage sometimes than Catholics, but they can actually tell which hosts are real and which aren't. Um, and so they'll, they sometimes come and try to steal or, or do things like that. And so if I don't know the person and I don't know what's going on, I force them to receive on the tongue or I just give them a blessing. If it's even obvious when I'm going for the mouth, that they don't know what's going on, then okay, bye. <laughs> Next. Um, when we went to the cathedral in Rapid City, they had guards at the exits. And so they watch you consume it before you can go back to your seat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In Denver, the, the ushers stand actually right next to the person distributing communion. They step out as soon as you step up and they, you're like boxed in until you receive um, because it is a big deal. This is our Lord. And if we really believe it is Jesus, then by, by golly, we better start treating him like that, right? And so mm -hmm. we, um, some people will receive on the hands uh, to be able to receive. That's allowed in the United States, according to the general instruction of the Roman Missal, that'd be number 160. Um, I had to look this up, but also in Redemptoris uh, Sacramentum in number 91, that they could they could receive that way in the United States. That's not allowed in most other countries, though. So if you travel abroad and you present yourself with your hands, you might get smacked with that patent that I talked about, that gold dish on a stick. 
Um, I've, I've seen that happen all over Europe. People, Americans would go up and do this in the server, bam, <laughs> their hands would, their what? <laughs> you know, would distribute on the tongue. The idea there is that the priest's hands are, are consecrated. They are consecrated with sacred chrism. He's acting in persona Christi in the place of Christ. We don't feed ourselves. We allow the Lord to feed us. And so the priest then places the most blessed sacrament on the person's tongue. Um, so they could receive on the tongue that way. Uh, we have a communion rail at St. Mary's. So even though at Sunday mass, we don't use it, uh, the daily mass crowd likes it. So we use the communion rail at daily mass. Um, it's a great way to receive another nickname for the communion rail, by the way, also titled this by uh, the church would be the people's altar um, to be able to receive at the people's altar there. So there's, there's various ways of receiving, but everything should be directed towards great reverence to our Lord and recognition of who we're receiving, that this is God, uh, this, is, this is who he is. Um, and as long as we're reverent about that and we're not doing something weird, we'll be able to receive very gracefully, right, and, and beautifully. Um, and I think as regular Catholics, which is probably who's on here praying the rosary with us, I highly doubt you need to worry about, am I doing something weird? No. You'd know, we would tell you. <laughs> um, but I, I put that in there because that is the one of the few times that I've not allowed communion on the hand is I just didn't know what, what the person was doing. Um, I had once in the early part of my priesthood, it was just once, uh, a girl walk away with the Blessed Sacrament and we had to stop mass so I could go talk to her and retrieve our Lord. Um, but that, that is a thing, which is why sometimes priests, you might see them, you know, what are they doing? Where are they walking away? It is preferred that you consume in front of the priest, the church says. Um, so that would be, if you're, even if you're receiving on the hand, consume him right there would be, would be great. That would be phenomenal. I know some priests might get mad that I say stuff like that, but that it's in the general instruction. I don't know what to tell you. Um, that that's the, the best thing to do there. Um, and it might seem weird that we have all those rules, but again, it's all about honoring who is truly present, that God is feeding us. He's giving us himself. We, we want to we want to make sure that we know this is him. There's a, a thing in the church of Maxim, Lex Arandi, Lex Credendi. The, the, um, the way of prayer is the way of belief. If we pray and we act like this is the Lord, it's going to really help reinforce us. If the guy's up there just being all sloppy, and, then no one's going to believe that that's truly Jesus, right? Um, so the way we pray is the way we believe. Um, and, and it's true in, in, in anything we do, right? You, if you believe that you can accomplish something, um, you might not be the next astronaut on the moon, but my God, you can become a pretty smart person on your way there, right? Uh, so we, we, we have that there. So there really is no wrong way to receive it. In the as United long States, as you're doing it reverently and in, with piety. You might get some weird looks if you kneel down, but in the United States, as well as in the rest of the world, if someone kneels down for Holy Communion in front of the person just reading, you may not deny them Holy Communion. Um, just based on that action uh they can receive on the tongue that cannot be denied based on that action the hand is firmly acceptable in the united states like i just said um with with number 160 there in the general instruction of the roman missal which is governs how mass is celebrated uh the only way that that could then be denied is if i have a doubt about something that's happening in the reception of communion i could then require the tongue um, or if someone came and their hand was like covered with grease i would probably open your mouth. Um, I've never had that happen, but I guess that's just an example of people wash their hands on the, the mass. Uh, it is, the, the church has long preferred the, the use of receiving on the tongue, but again, the custom, there's been some different customs that have happened around the world at times of making a throne for God and receiving in that way. So it's very, follow the direction of your local bishop. This diocese, that's, that's tra the tradition is typically standing receiving a uh, hand or tongue. However, you are more than welcome to kneel. You might be in a place that uses communion rail once in a while. Um, you can't be denied for that. Now, someone could be denied Holy Communion if they were living a public state of mortal sin. And it would have to be a public state of mortal sin. That was one of the questions um, on here. I don't remember how it was worded, but I wrote my notes down. Uh, uh, someone could be denied if they're living publicly in the state of mortal sin. So their sins would have to be known to the greater community not to the priest. Um, one, I don't think about anything that you guys are, are saying or have ever said to me when you're coming up for communion. I'm more worried about, I've got to get him from airtime to them um, without dropping him. That, that my concern is for, for the person currently handling the blessed sacrament. Um, most of the time, I'm not focused on what you're wearing or 
have said to me before mass starts or whatever, I'm, I'm focused that we're getting you our blessed Lord. And I think most priests are like that. But if someone were to come up, uh, let's say uh, a politician that publicly is disagreeing with church dogma um, on anything from abortion to marriage uh, to the priesthood, they could be denied communion because they are in the state of public sin, even if they've gone to confession, because it's a public sin. So it needs to be publicly amended, um, needs to be publicly amended. Um, that doesn't mean that they can't come to mass. That doesn't mean that they shouldn't come to mass. They really should, because there's racism mass that can work on that part, but they could be denied Holy communion and, and really should be. Why? Because in first Corinthians 11, 27, 32, first Corinthians 11 verses 27 through 32. Let's say that again, because there's confusion going on in the mass media. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 through 32. This is why the church says that only people in the state of grace should receive communion. Um, before I read that, it's also why we have this so-called closed communion that everyone else says we have, but we don't. Closed communion, um, which means only Catholics in the state of grace can receive. What is that saying? It's saying, I love the other person that can't receive so much that I'm not going to um, just go all jihadi on them and force my beliefs down their throat, which is what we're saying if we invite a Lutheran to our church or someone who's Catholic and not practicing and say, oh, it's okay to receive. We're shoving our faith down their throat and there's no freedom to believe there. And we don't love that person when we do that. If we really want to love a person, I want to respect their belief, their right to think differently, their right to be able to act differently. Even if it's wrong, they have that free choice. It's called free will. And we actually cannot inhibit free will or we take on the sin. So someone puts a gun to the back of your head and says, hurt that other person, you're not culpable for the sin that person behind you would be. Same if we tell someone that's not Catholic to receive communion, you're now culpable for all that. Don't do that. Love the person instead. Love them instead and say, I'm going to respect your right to not believe everything the church teaches. I got a friend. He's not Catholic. Um, come sometimes when, 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 I, when I say mass, um, never receives. And it's no problem. He feels perfectly welcome. He said, I've never felt not welcome. Um, sometimes he comes up for the blessing with his arms crossed just to get a blessing. Sometimes he doesn't. He has never felt rejected by the Catholic church. So people that say they feel rejected because they can't receive communion, I'm going to challenge you and say, I don't think you believe in what Holy Communion is. Or you wouldn't think that. Because when you receive communion, you'd have to know this is the body of Christ. And if you really believe that, you would believe that everything he's teaching, right? And, and that, that, that wouldn't become a thing. Um, but... If, if, if they don't believe that, then they're not going to want to receive. Because when we say amen, that's not only the body of Christ they're saying amen to. They're saying amen to, I believe that the church has a hierarchy. The Pope is the supreme shepherd that we must follow uh, our bishops so long as they're teaching morality. Um, and that I believe in a single male Catholic priesthood. I believe that we can ask Mary to pray for us. I believe that Catholics must go to confession minimal once a year. I believe um, that we have to attend mass every single Sunday to stay in the state of grace unless we're shut in or sick. Um, we're saying amen to all of that is if your friends who's a Methodist or Lutheran going to say, amen, believe that no, then we should respect the right to believe and say, I love you. And I do not want you to become a hypocrite, to become someone that stands up that Jesus ridicules in sacred scripture for saying they believe one thing and then doing another, right? No, we say, I don't want you to be that. I want you to be hot or cold, never lukewarm, hot or cold, huh? book of revelation, be hot or cold. So I love you. So don't just come with your arms crossed. It's not a big deal. Um, I also want to point out that no one is watching you receive communion. That's an American thing. And I had that in my brain for the longest time, even on how I distribute. I'm like, they're watching how I'm giving communion out to people. No, they're not. They are not. They might look around for their friend or their family member, um, but they, one, they can't see you when you're directly in front of the priest. They're not watching you receive. It's okay if you come up with a blessing. No, that's perfectly acceptable. Even if you stay in the pew. I've never seen people that have stayed in the pews ever receive ridicule when they go out the back of the church. Instead, I hear, well, hey, Bill, how are you doing today? No one, no one's going to do that. We, uh, we, we want to be able to love all people that come. Anyway, 1 Corinthians 11, 27 through 32. This is why the church has what I all I went off on. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the literal body and blood of the Lord. Let someone examine themselves and so eat of the bread of life and drink of the cup for anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks their own judgment and damnation. That is why many of you who are weak and ill have, have seen some even die. But if we judged ourselves truly, 
we should not then be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we will be chastised, so we may not be condemned along with the world. What he's saying there, the first part of that's what, what matters the most. What he's saying there is, we want to examine ourselves, go to confession, get that taken care of, whatever it is, let the Lord have it. He loves you. Be, be clean, receive him great. But when he's saying, if we see the a Lord in the unworthy manner, no longer is are we receiving salvation, we're condemning ourselves because we're profaning Christ. I mean, we don't want to do that. Um, so if we're in the state of mortal sin, uh, we need to go to confession. And it's not a big deal. I think we've hyped this up to the point that people are like, that church is so mean. No, the church loves us so much that she's like, we want you to be able to receive this in the perfect state of love. The book of Exodus, Miriam is Moses's mom. What does she do to the basket? We heard this in the readings today, right, MF? She, she dips that in the stuff. I, wow, just kind of lost it. She dips it in the stuff, makes the basket waterproof before she floats it down the river, right? She makes the basket waterproof so that she can put Moses, the archetype of Christ, in it. We need to make ourselves as baskets of the Lord, temples of the Holy Spirit, capable of containing him. So we go to confession and, and we allow the Lord to cleanse us. And then our baskets are going to float down the river with the minute. We don't do that. We're going to sing. Um, also, Miriam's an archetype of Mary, which is kind of nice. Mary, and Mary, you know, Mary always wants our souls. Do whatever he tells you, right? The Lord says, be clean and, and let me love you. Uh, there's not judgment by the church in that, in any of that at all. Instead, she feels just like she's standing right there with Martha um or excuse me with mary magdalene right and we're, we're in the dirt with mary magdalene and the lord says arise be clean come follow me and they're just like hey, yeah that that's what we're going after that's that's the goal there um so that notion of closed communion or or that we're trying to tell people they're not welcome that that's that's a fallacy i think it's an excuse people use to avoid church it's not real it's when people don't want to come to mass they look for excuses right um, and, and so I, I just think that that's kind of crept up in society, but that's not a legit thing. The church doesn't want that. Last thing on that question, divorced and not being able to receive the Eucharist, um, was a question that was asked. Um, yes, yes. And no, if you are divorced, can you receive the Eucharist? Yes. And no, this is actually a very difficult question because we don't know that that person. Take. So for example, if someone gets a civil divorce and they're not living together, they haven't got a divorce in the church, right? We don't do divorce. We have annulments, but we don't have divorce. So what, what does the church see? If, if two are living together and all of a sudden two are not living together, what does she see? Two people not living together. People that are, are married, but they're not living together. So long as they're not entering into another relationship or going out and dating um, or trying to, to create another relationship, they could technically receive even with a civil divorce because they're not living with another person. They're not seeking another person. They, they're just hus a husband and wife that are separated in the eyes of the church, regardless of what civil law says. Remember, we're working with the law of the church, the law of God, and, and the church recognizes the law of God. I don't care what civil authority tells you. We're working on the law. They're just living apart. Now, if someone wants to contract another marriage, they would need the annulment, right? They would need the annulment for that to go through. Once they receive the annulment, they could receive again. Um, no problem with that. But if they contract another union outside of the church without that annulment, then the church would say, please do not receive communion until we can rectify this. And the church wants to rectify that. Um, it does take a lot while, unfortunately, in this diocese. Um, annulments can sometimes go slow, sometimes fast, but we can get them done. Um, priests have no problem doing that for you. Walk up to your pastor if you need one. I need an annulment. Okay, let's work on this. Let's get your marriage blessed in the church. We, the church wants this. The church is is more about doling out sacraments and helping rectify situations than she is trying to put up walls and barriers. Um, and that's because she wants that, that perfect union to be able to allow each other to love each other into the kingdom of God. So if we're in a relationship that needs that fix, just, just go to your priest. We'll work on it. We'll, we'll get you there. Um, a note on that. I know a couple, I won't throw their names under the bus, but uh, they, they got, they, they came together in a, in a civil union. One had been married before in the church and did not have an annulment. They did not receive communion for years, years. But they got their marriage annulled and their marriage blessed. Um, and it was just beautiful to watch them to be able to receive for the first time. But as they did so, there was almost this twinge that you could tell because they had refrained from so long, they knew who they were receiving. And there was such extreme devotion in that, such extreme passion and being able to receive and welcome the Lord. And I kind of liken that to what Fulton Sheen would speak about of 
It's only someone that's been forgiven much that's capable of really understanding that forgiveness. It's only someone that's been um, brought up from the hem of the muck like Mary Magdalene was that really needed to be there for when Christ opened the temple because she's the only one that could have really truly grasped that triumph over evil. When he says Mary, that must have been a clap of thunder in her soul of, wow, you know, and, and she would have got it better than anyone else. We'd say even, well, even more than Mary, the mother of God, because she was without sin, right? Mary, who has overcome this, sees it more, and she becomes so zealous and runs and tells the disciples. Um, we can experience that, too, if we have to refrain for a while and, and have that rejuvenation. Um, so the, the, it's a very beautiful process in the end, that, and that's the goal. Um, we don't want people to feel excluded. The goal instead is to create a healthy soul for us to get to heaven. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And I think a lot of us can relate to that exclusion going through a pandemic <laughs> and not being able to receive the Eucharist. And then, um, you know, the church doors open and we were able to receive the Eucharist again. And we all can kind of feel that feeling. I know for myself, I can kind of feel that feeling of being able to go to mass for the first time. And it's like, <laughs> yay. And so um, I think it's a beautiful thing that the church does when they're asking you to come into a state of grace and um, walk through this, this time because it does kind of give you that longing and that sense of desire and then that a real presence when you do get to receive. So thank you, Father Matthew, for walking us through all those different points. There was a lot of information here. I am really thankful for all the information that you gave us. So all those watching, if you need to go back, it'll be on our YouTube channel. I'll share I'll upload it tomorrow and share it. And um, we are really grateful for this time. And I didn't see any other questions come in. And I think everyone was just kind of soaking in what information you were giving us. So it's a lot there. And I tried to succinct it. And so there still is some stuff that I said that would probably need to be unpacked at some point for some folks. So if there's something I said and you're like, what? Or kind of maybe you rubbed the wrong way there or, or something that needed more explanation. You know, you can always reach out to me or, or your local priest, um, the catechism, the Bible, uh, you know, Catholic answers, uh, wherever you want to look. Um, cause there is a lot that I, what I said here, I mean, there's no way to unpack this all in such a brief time. I mean, even just the Eucharist itself, um, and, and like the series we're doing on the walk through the mass, I said, Oh, we'll be done in five weeks. And no, we, we're not even to the Eucharistic prayer yet. So, um, Aww. you know, don't, don't be afraid to, to, okay, something, here, oh, I need more information on this. Well, we, we the church has lots of it for you. <laughs> so. Don't be afraid to look. I think that's the beauty of the church is there's always something more to learn and something more to grow in. And you never kind of really can grasp it all in this lifetime. So, <laughs> and just reiterate, like, just ask God for the graces to be able to understand the true presence of the Eucharist and get back to mass. I mean, mass is the most important thing. And so get back to mass. And if you have a chance to go to daily mass, I love daily mass. Um, it just is really Formative because it, uh, well, for one, I'm not wrestling kids like I do during, <laughs> during an hour long mass and um, it's a little quicker and you're kind of able to kind of soak it in a little bit differently than um, Sunday mass. So I would encourage you to get to daily mass. And, and priests love when you do, by the way, for, for all the masses and when you make regular use of any of the sacraments, because um, even though, yes, we still said mass during the pandemic, it was very distressing if you think about it. We, it was like a shepherd without sheep. You know, Jesus says he doesn't want the sheep to be without a shepherd. And all of a sudden this thing hit. And I remember sitting there with Father Jonathan, and Father Vincent, we were like, I think he also meant that you don't ever want to be shepherds without sheep. Like this is, it was horrible. Um, you know, the Lord be with you. Cricket, cricket, cricket. That's yeah. <laughs> Priest. Hebrews 5 says is taken from among the people to be there for and with the people. And he himself is beset by sin and weakness. And so he prays and offers that sacrifice for his people, knowing that he struggles too. And looking out and being like, well, where are the people? <laughs> um, so go. It's okay. Make your priests do a little bit of work. We, we appreciate it. Even a lot more now, I think, than before the pandemic. Yeah. So next week, we're going to be talking about devotion to Mary. But Father Matthew won't be with us Um. Uh, Judy Klein is the author of this book, Mary's Way. It's backwards on the video, but um, Judy Klein is the author of this book, and she'll be joining me to talk about devotion to Mary and talk about her book, and she has a phenomenal story. So 
I'm looking forward to spending that time with her and I hope you guys can join us. Well, Father, would you mind giving us a blessing to end our night? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go Amen. and be. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight.